So we're a few weeks into the new year. So either you're holding strong to all those new year resolutions you made, or you've abandoned them altogether. I find that one of the best ways to help set meaningful goals, to stay motivated, and to move forward in the coming year is to look back at where you've come in the last year and create those mental milestones to celebrate that progress. For this next year of photography, I'm going to look back at 2018 to see what I learned and how I grew. It's cause for celebration and will help provide some clues as to where I should head over this next year. And I encourage you to do the same. Spend the next week looking back over your 2018 and list your achievements, your milestones, failures, lessons learned, and celebrate it. So here are 10 things that I learned last year about landscape photography and life for that matter. I'll link to some related posts and vlogs if you want to dive deeper into any of these. The first lesson I learned is to make everything count. And if it doesn't count, remove it. That's minimalism in a nutshell, and it applies as much to life as it does to photography. And photography, we can think of it as a sort of philosophy of addition. You start from a blank canvas, and you only add or only put into the frame what has impact and what is meaningful. If you have some distractions in that image, you might try to eliminate that. We could do this with techniques like light painting, which helps you strip out distractions from a photo. And then we could paint in with dodging and burning just the parts of the image that fit into the overall composition. The second lesson I learned last year is the importance of shapes and separation in an image. Shapes are what help connect the different subjects in your image together. Without them, your eye isn't quite sure how to wander and rove throughout the image, and the different subjects just seem disjointed. Shapes like an S-curve or an M-curve help connect the different subjects so that way the eye naturally roves throughout the entirety of the image. Separation is what helps give each of those subjects their own space and makes them individual as opposed to just one big blob. An example of separation might be fog or water, or you might just have different lighting falling on the landscape. This helps split up the image into foreground, midground, and background, so that way each subject has a little bit of space to shine, but is not completely isolated. The shapes help connect them together. The third lesson I learned last year is the importance of neutral tones in an image. As we talked about in some previous vlogs, neutral tones are colors within an image that the viewer expects to be grayscale, or in other words, we expect them to be neutral. These neutral tones might be in the clouds, might be in the water, reflections, pretty much anything, but it needs to be an important element of the composition, and these neutral tones help indicate to the viewer what neutral is. With strong neutral tones, you can get away with pulling out some really poppy colors in the rest of the landscape without it looking fakey. An image without those neutral tones can be a little bit fakey and just look oversaturated. By keeping those neutral tones neutral, you can do some pretty dramatic saturation and other changes to the rest of your color palette. Or you can use those neutral tones to create some stunning contrast between the neutrals and those really soft pastel tones you might have in a hazier image. The fourth lesson I learned last year is that learning is a scarce commodity. So you shouldn't just take on any activity that you expect to learn from. You should be strategic and pick those learning avenues that will accelerate your growth and not just help you grow at a linear rate. Growth is not an accident. It is the result of intentional strategic effort. So make every minute that you get to invest in your craft valuable. The fifth lesson I learned last year is to not underestimate the value of your failed images. This is due to a cognitive bias called survivorship bias, which we've talked about in some previous vlogs. Survivorship bias is where we tend to underestimate the value of failure and overestimate how much we can learn from success, when in fact, mathematically speaking, it's exactly the reverse. One of the ways that we can avoid survivorship bias is by journaling as we go and performing retrospectives. Retrospectives are where we take a look back try to figure out what lessons we learned and ask ourselves how we will concretely apply those in the future. So in the spirit of treating learning as a scarce commodity, take advantage of your failed images as the best source of learning material you can possibly get. The sixth lesson that I learned last year is that shooting with one lens can be very difficult, but it's probably one of the best constraints to help you really master your composition. For the last year, I've traveled only with an ultra wide angle lens, the 16 to 35 millimeter. Before that, I had the very flexible 24 to 105, which allowed me to take advantage of pretty much wherever I was, and I didn't have to worry too much about getting into a particular position to get a good composition. 
However, I tended to get a little bit lazy. Shooting with a 16 or 35 and that being my only lens, I had no option but to get into a better position and to improve my composition. As a result of doing that in Oregon last year, my compositions got so much better. And that's improvement I probably wouldn't have seen if I could have just fallen back to a more flexible lens like the 24 to 105. The seventh lesson that I learned last year is the importance of cognitive biases and how they hold us back from improving. We already talked about some of them, like the survivorship bias, but there's also the planning fallacy, which is our tendency to underestimate how much planning we need to do ahead of time to be successful and to grow, and also causes us to forget previous lessons. Make sure to check out the dedicated vlog on some of those cognitive biases and how they influence your photography. The eighth lesson I learned last year is how crucial boredom is to creativity. Normally when you get that feeling of boredom, you assume that you need to find something productive to do. And this was always my assumption, but as I've done long-term photography, I've found that I tend to get burnt out really quickly. Sometimes I just need to leave my camera behind and go enjoy the outdoors. Make sure to go check out the dedicated article and see why that is the case. The ninth lesson I learned last year is how important it is to think of time as your best ally. So if you want to become a full-time photographer or a travel writer or an educator, you need to stop waiting for the perfect opportunity that will never come and instead start pretending that you are that person. Pretend that you're a full-time photographer. Pretend that you're a digital nomad. Pretend that you're a writer. And in pretending to do it, then you will accomplish it. Just start investing one hour a day in what you love. Investing one hour a day over a year adds up to nine weeks of full-time work over a year. The 10th lesson I learned this year is that contentedness is a choice and not a result of circumstances. As I've moved into doing full-time landscape photography and doing a year of travel, I really expected travel to make me much more satisfied with life. But I found that I begin to crave what I used to have at home, or I begin to crave settling down again. Contentedness is a mindset and a choice, not something that you can pursue. Now, one of the ways that you can help cultivate an attitude of contentedness is to also foster a mindset of thankfulness. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Looking back over the previous year, looking at things we've learned, looking at milestones, celebrate every single one of those to help cultivate that mindset. So that way, as you look forward into the future, your happiness and your contentedness isn't based on the next year, which will always be a year away. It's going to be based on the previous year. So I hope some of those lessons are valuable to you, I would encourage you to look over your previous year in photography and lifestyle and ask yourself, what were the lessons that I learned? What were my failures? What were the milestones? What were my achievements? And celebrate them and now use that to inform your next year to decide when I look back on 2019, what do I want to see about myself? Make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the latest digital nomad tips, landscape photography tutorials, and on-location vlogs.